This is the main board from a Sony PlayStation Slim model CECH 2001A, 2001A. So, this is the earliest model of the PlayStation Slim. What this talk is about is the problem of flashing the firmware on this uh, chip. Specifically, if you're trying to do a downgrade to firmware 3.55, as many people try to do, uh, people employ a, uh, a flasher device, the, like the E3 flasher. Now, that device has a, a, uh, a cover which goes over the chip like so. Now, there are pins on the inside of the flasher, which match every pin on the chip. Here's a close-up of that memory chip and the flasher. For every pin on the chip, there's a corresponding pin on the flasher. Now, when you place this cover on top of the chip, you should get good contract with each and every one of those pins. Now, if you don't, your uh, E3 flasher will probably give you an error. It says 1000110, or in other words, the 156 error. Now, why is this so frequent with this particular model? It has to do with this little surface mounted part right here. This little surface mounted resistor right there. It is partially blocking the reader when you try to put it down. It won't, it won't go all the way down because it's being held up by that little resistor right there. Okay. The solution is to remove some of the plastic from right about there so this chip will fit flush with the board. Now, uh, if, to know if you have this problem, just to sort of try to peek underneath the, uh, the clip here and see if one side is higher than the other. And you can see this side is a little bit higher than this side being held up by that little resistor that's right there. And that's going to prevent you from getting good pin contact on this side. We now have the PS3 disassembled and set up with the E3 flasher. The flasher is currently being held on with tape onto the memory chip. The switch configuration is set up for a memory dump, that is, reading what's on the chip and storing it on our uh, SD card. We're going to press the Start button and see what happens. Now, if it's working, it should light up blue on this side and start working its way across. Okay, now it's flashing an error code, and this is our 156 error code, indicating that we don't have good contact. Now, I've tried several different configurations. I've tried putting the tape on different ways. I've even tried putting a clamp on here. I've tried putting a coin on top and then clamping it down different layer, different levels of pressure, and I keep getting the same 156 error. Now we have the clip taken off. And that resistor sits right about there. So what we need to do is we're going to have to remove a little bit of plastic right from here. It's going to be a very delicate operation to remove a little bit of plastic without damaging any of these pins. Just enough to just enough to accommodate that little resistor. Now I've taken these little files here and I've gone ahead and I've shaved off some plastic 
right there, right along in there. That resistor sits right about there. And this is just enough room to fit that resistor underneath this thing. It sits right about there on the board. So now this will fit flush with the board and all the pins will make better contact. So we'll go ahead and now put it back together and retest it. Okay, now we have put back on the, the socket on top of the memory chip after we have shaved a little bit of plastic off and now it lies flat and flush with the board. We're also using a clamp to apply a little bit of pressure. We have a, a coin underneath this piece of tape that's actually a nickel that will apply an even force on the uh, socket. Now, at least you think I've got this uh, short circuit here. There's a piece of plastic between this metal and the underside as well. So we're careful not to create any short circuits. We'll see what happens this time. We've got the dancing blue lights going back and forth. So far, so good. We'll wait a few minutes to get our uh, message on screen. Okay, we've got our on-screen message, so something's running. We'll go ahead and press the start key. Aha! Uh -huh. That's what we want to see. A blue light at the left side, and the lights will slowly move across as it reads the memory chip here, and it stores it on the memory chip, the SD card. Okay, back to the dancing blue lights. Well, it looks like we got something. I'm going to go ahead and turn it off now. I have removed the micro SD card from the E3 flasher and put it in my personal computer. And this is what we got, exactly what we hoped to get. These two files, BKPPS3, dot bin and eflasher.log. Good. Okay, in summary, if you have a PlayStation 3 and you're trying to if you're trying to reflash your firmware and you can't get a good contact, if you keep getting the 1556 error on your uh, E3 flasher, take a look at your board and just see if you've got that little resistor tucked up really close to this chip. And if so, take a very fine file and go ahead and shave off a little bit of plastic right there. Now just be very careful. Just shave a little bit of plastic right there until this socket fits snugly over the chip and is completely flush with the board and, and no side is higher than the other. And then go ahead and retry it. Good chance that'll fix it.